What's up everybody, Camero here, and welcome to part 46 of my How to Make a Pokemon Game tutorial series. In this episode, we are going to be looking at scripted losses, or how to make the game continue after you've lost a battle. First, we're going to make a very simple trainer, where when you lose to them, they'll play one line of dialogue versus playing another line of dialogue, but ultimately the path will remain the same. And then next, we're going to make a more complex trainer, where when you lose to them versus when you win to them, the path can branch. So that's pretty interesting. And then after that, we're going to look at wild Pokemon. Losing against wild Pokemon isn't as interesting, plus it doesn't work as well, but there are some cool things that you can do for wild Pokemon battles specifically to track whether you've caught the Pokemon, whether you ran from the Pokemon, whether you defeated the Pokemon. So I'm going to break all that down right now. Let's get into it. So the very first thing I've got here you'll notice is a couple youngsters and a, a, a strange Lapras here, but we'll get to that later. This is our trainer. This is the basic youngster trainer event that I just stole from the default Route 3 map. It's just this guy right here. Comes with Pokemon Essentials. Copied him, pasted him over here. So let's make it so that way when you fight this guy, if you beat him, he'll say, Ah, oh, you beat me. Good job. But if you lose to him, he'll say, Hey, you suck. So <laughs> it's going to be really simple. Um, but let's make it so that way also when you lose to him, you won't fight him anymore, but when you win, you won't fight him anymore either. Let's say that. If we wanted to, we could make it so that way you could keep refighting him over and over again, but let's just let's just do that real quick. So, there's two comments that you need to put in the trainer event that will set us up to continue. The very first one, funnily enough, is actually called continue. So if you need if you make a new comment in your event and just write continue colon true this will make it so that way when you lose this trainer battle you won't get sent back to a pokemon center or to your house it will just drop you off right where you were and it'll fully heal all your pokemon so continue true will just make it so that way losing to this guy will the game will continue afterwards the next thing you need to do is make another comment and this is the interesting one and call it outcome if I could spell, cool. And then in here, you want to put a number. The number that you put in here is based on a variable. So let's take a look at our variables. It's my voice cracks, I'm sorry. Let's, uh, let's just put it in variable 30. Let's make our variable and just call it uh, youngster win. Cool. So now we have a variable 30 that's just called youngster win. So the way that outcome works is if you win, the outcome will be set to 1. The value of that variable will be set to 1. If you lose, outcome will be set to 2. So our variable number is 30. And after this battle takes place, the variable 30 will be set to either 1 or 2. That is where our next event comes into play. So what we need to do now that we've got our trainer all set up is make another event. So new event, if the variable youngster win is greater than one, so if it's one or above, basically after the battle, youngster win is going to be set to either one or two. So this will be good. Let's make so that way this event auto runs. So after the battle, this event will automatically play. And now let's start doing some conditional branch stuff. So if the variable youngster win is equal to one, that means you won the battle. It'll just display text saying, you won. Cool. Else, that means you lost. It'll say, you lost. You stink. Get good. There we go. So this is how you make it so that way something happens whether you win or lose. Pretty basic. It's not done yet, though. The census is set to auto run. It's going to keep going since Youngster Win is still equal to 1 or above. So at the end of the event, let's control the variables. And let's set Youngster Win back to 0. So it'll, this event will only play once. Cool. So now, this is an interesting thing right here. Since I lost, uh, let me show you. This bit right here in the center of this conditional branch, this control self switch A on, this only works when you've won the battle. So control self switch A for this event will only happen if you've won. And what that does is it makes it so that way you won't fight this trainer anymore. If we want to make it so that way we don't fight our trainer even when we've lost, 
We can control the self switch in this event by using PB set self switch. I just put this here. This is copied and pasted from a, another event and modified uh, once again on our route three. I love this map. So what this event does, I think I've broken it down in another tutorial, but uh, just as a refresher, this will change the self switch of another event. So let's go back to our event. So if we win, self switch A will be turned on for our trainer who has ID four, and then you won't battle him anymore. Instead, when you talk to him, he'll just say, you can't get a trainer event simpler than me. Easy, cool. So now when you win, it'll say you won and set youngster win equal to zero. And if you lose, it'll say you lost, you stink at good. It'll set youngster win to zero again. And then it'll set the self switch of our youngster to on. So if you win, you won't fight him again. And if you lose, you won't fight him again. If you want to change that, what you could do is get rid of this self switch. So now I will fight him again. And um, let's make it so that way after he says get good, it actually moves the player. So let's set the mover of our player to move down. Um, cool. So now let's assume we're from below walking up. If you can't beat this guy, he'll tell you to get good and push you down. So let's test it. This should be pretty easy to test. Um, what I've done here actually to set up for this tutorial is I've given myself just a Pikachu, as you can see, and he, it, he only has five health. So it should be pretty easy to lose this battle. I can also lose the battle through debug, but I'll just I'll just approach it through natural means. I'll just fight this guy like normal. Let's fight guy. All right, so when I cross his line of sight, the battle will start. Hi, I like shorts. Their company, I like shorts too. In fact, I'm wearing shorts right now. Imagine that. All right, youngster Ben would like to battle. He throws out his Rattata. Very intimidating. I'll tail whip him. Like you do. Pretty easy. And he bites. Cool. So I'm going to lose this battle now. Dang it. Shucks. I lost. I lost against Youngster Ben. There we go. He says, you lost. You stink. Get good. And then he pushes me down. Cool. So since I have continue set to true, now all my Pokemon will be at full health. And I can battle him again. Hi, I like shorts. They're comfy and easy to wear. Cool. So every time I lose to this guy, he'll keep on pushing me down. And I cannot advance until I win. Pretty interesting. And I'll use debug now to win. If I hold control, since I'm in debug mode and I hit run, treat this battle as a win. Uh, yes. I beat him. Oh, I lost. You won. There we go. That's the message that we set. And now I won't battle him anymore. Very nice. So that's our simple event. Now let's try making a little bit more complex of an event with this guy up here. So what I've done here is I've actually already made this guy. He's using um, variable 60. He's the exact same. He says he likes shorts, they're comfy and easy to wear. But yeah, you see continue is set to true. Cool. So what I've done here, um, I'll, I'll, re I'll remake it from the ground up. But essentially what happens here is after you beat this guy, he'll say you won. I guess you're free to go. If you lose, he'll say I'm throwing you in jail. There we go. So this is our little jail here. <laughs> but uh, I'll remake that. Let's uh, let's let's make it fresh so that way we can learn. So yeah, he is using variable 60. So let's make a new event. If that variable, if the variable, where, there it is, win Joey, is one or above, that means the battle has happened. Let's insert a conditional branch. Do 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 conditional branch. Cool. So where is he? Win Joey. Oh no, man, that's a switch. Excuse me. Variables. That's what I need. If win Joey is equal to one, that means I've won. Oh yeah, let's make this auto run also. Then show text. It'll say you won. Story path A advances. Let's do it like this actually. Let's make it so that way if you beat him, then you continue on this path. But if you lose, you continue on this path. So we could actually just make a separate path over here that it'll like warp you to. Pretty interesting stuff. So since this is all through events, you really have a bunch of power and control over what's going on over here. So it's pretty good. Let's just make a dumb little path right here. Very simple, not not too good looking, but yeah. 
Um, so if you've beat him, he'll say Story Path A advances. And um, what we could do is control a switch. Well, if we wanted to, we could make a switch. And we could just call this, I don't know, Path A. And let's just make another one called Path B. This isn't the most clear way to do it, but uh, let's just do that. Path A. Path A is on. Cool. So Path A and Path A versus Path B, there should only be one on at a time. And let's control that here. Let's see. Now let's control this one and say, uh, you lost story path B. There we go. So when you won, you get to move up. When you lose, it will warp you. Uh, transfer player to the same map, but let's transfer him over here. Whatever, just there. Um, facing up. Here we go. And then now we need to make it so that way we change uh, Win Joey back to zero. We can't forget to do that. Control variables. Win Joey equal to zero. There we go. Cool. Easy peasy. So now, if you beat this guy, you can move forward and walk up. And if you lose, you can walk here. Cool. And uh, if we wanted to, we could make an event where... Um, Conditional branch. If path A is on, and then otherwise we'll just assume path B is on, um, then he'll say, he'll say, wow, you're a good trainer. You beat youngster Joey or whatever. There you go. And if you lost, then he'll say, wow, I can't believe you lost to that youngster Joey dot dot dot. Sad guy. There we go. Let's just make it a guy. Uh, or a girl. Whatever. There you go. Just talk to her. Cool. And if we wanted to, if we wanted to be really cheeky, we could just do this. <laughs> So they're all connected, whatever. Anyway, so the idea is using events, you can, if you wanted to, make branching storylines where a certain dialogue tree happens and some other thing happens depending on if you won or if you lost, then other things can happen. So it's really just based on this. This event right here that happens after the trainer battle that is separate from the trainer battle is where all the magic happens. Just be sure that after you've set this variable, like if it's auto run, that you set it back to zero, or if you really wanted to, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, take a look at this. Here's a little advanced technique. What you could do is make, say, this auto runs, and then inserts, um, control self switch, A on. There we go. So now this will only happen once. Bada bing. Actually, no, since it's happening in both, we could really just copy this, paste it at the end here. Cool. And then make a new event page where if self switch A is on. And now, instead of talking about the switch path A versus path B, this person could just use a variable. So if the variable win Joey is equal to 1, that means me won. Otherwise, we lost. So there's other ways to do it. There's a lot of different ways that you can do things if you want to. Basically, I like eventing in RPG Maker, if you couldn't tell. And um, I like it when we have the power to control things with events. So let me just use debug to skip that guy. So it's pretty nice that now if I lose versus if I win, that trainer, that person's dialogue up there will change. So that's kind of cool. So he says, hi, I like shorts. They're comfy and easy to wear. I'm going to lose this battle. I'm going to go out of my way to lose this battle. Youngster Ben. Oh. It's not Youngster Joey. I should have known it's Youngster Ben. I really just been copying and pasting these guys. Treated as a win? No. Let's lose. Yeah. Let's lose. You lost, story path B. Whoa, here I am, ha uh ha. -huh. Now if I talk to her, she'll say, wow, I can't believe you lost. You suck. But I have a rematch chance. I have a chance to rematch him. Since I lost and I didn't set that self switch of the trainer to on, I could battle the trainer again. So let's battle again, and this time let's win. Let's go to story path A now. Let's do it. All right. Run, tree does win. Yes, I win. I did it.
Wow, you're a good trainer. You beat Youngster Joey. Yay! Cool. So notice that her dialogue changed, but the event stuff after him didn't play again. The reason it didn't play again is because Self Switch A is already on. If we wanted to, we could make it so that way battling him turns the self, sway off, self switch off. Um, yeah, so basically there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with this. I hope that that helps, but I'm not done. Let me now break this down. What I've got here is a wild Lapras that's just been chilling in this corner. And as you can see here, this doesn't really do anything. Uh, as you can see here, there's a whole lot of stuff going on. Basically, after a wild Pokemon battle, after you call PB wild battle, this temp variable, which is equal to variable 1, which is temp Pokemon choice, will be set to either 1, 2, 3, or 4. If you want, you can put a conditional branch after your wild battle and say that if the variable 1 is equal to 1, that means you've won against the wild Pokemon, something can happen. You can make it so that way it displays text saying, you won, if you, if you beat it, if you defeat it. If you do two, this one is not as useful. Two is if you lost to the wild Pokemon, and really right now it'll still teleport you back to the Pokemon Center and back to like your home. But if you want to make stuff play out after you've lost, you can do that here. So, for example, if I lose this battle, I'll warp back to my house. It'll then it'll say you lost, and then just to be cheeky, uh, cheeky, I also warp. I set it so that way it warps me back to this map. It looks like crap, but basically you can call events after you lose to a wild Pokemon. If you escape from the wild Pokemon, like you run away from it, um, that's if temp Pokemon is equal to three. And then if you catch it, uh, if it's equal to four. So if you want to make special text play after a wild battle, if you catch it, then you can. Like, uh, let's show it off right now. I think if I hold control while I'm using a Pokeball, it'll debug auto catch it. So uh, let's catch this, and it'll display different text. Let me show that off real quick. Oh my gosh, the startled Pokemon. Oh no! I hope I actually have Pokeballs. If I don't have Pokeballs, then I might just need to run away. <laughs> but hey, we have special text that plays if I run away. So either way, it'll work out pretty good. Looks like my inventory is completely empty. Yikes. Okay. Um, I'm going to debug run away from this guy. Got away safely. Cool. Whoa. You ran away. Oh, there we go. It worked. It didn't look that great. But uh, yeah, let it be known that there is different conditional branches that you can do after wild Pokemon battles. This episode is primarily focusing on trainer battles because there's a lot of really interesting stuff you can do. Like, for example, at the start of your game, when you battle your rival, whether you win or lose, you could set a switch and then use that switch later in the game to then change which version of the rival you fight. So that's pretty cool. Um, thank you all for watching. I'm going to open this event as I do my little outro. I mean, they're both pretty good. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I hope this video helped you out and gave you some interesting ideas for battles that you could either win or lose. Um, be sure to follow me on Twitter, Twitch, uh, subscribe on YouTube. Um, there's going to also be a link to the Thundaga Discord in the channel. I still need to be more active on that. I'm sorry. I'm just very busy. <laughs> But uh, yeah, once again, thank you all for watching. I hope you found this very useful. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one, you guys. Bye.